uh, coming over to the third lecture in respiration in plants in the first and second we have learned about glycolysis uh, the link step and Krebs cycle now let us go for oxidative phosphorylation in the third of the series now electron transport chain what is this electron transport chain electron transport chain is the oxidation of NADH and FADH2 which were yielded during glycolysis the link step that is pyruvate carboxylation as also during Krebs cycle we got the yield of NADH and FADH now oxidation of these molecules will re result in formation of ATP there is also release of water molecule then the role of oxygen we know that during respiration oxygen is always required now till now we have not seen the role of oxygen where is oxygen involved so the role of oxygen will come here they come out as or they play the role of the terminal electron acceptors we will see that then electron passes from one carrier to another some carriers are located over the inner membrane of mitochondria so those carriers over the carriers electrons get transported from one to another finally to be accepted by oxygen and form water during that transportation there is release of ATP and the electron from where will they uh, be forming they will be forming or they will be uh, coming out from NADH and FADH so here you can see okay this is uh, okay just a minute I will enlarge zoom it okay so you can see here okay you can see here this is the mitochondrial electron transport that has been shown here this is the mitochondria okay so glucose glycolysis after glycolysis the pyruvic acid had entered here Krebs cycle took place here which we already talked about in a previous lecture okay and here during Krebs cycle there was yield of NADH okay there was yield of NADH there was yield of FADH2 now those molecules what will happen they will uh, be reacted upon by the specific enzyme and the release of electron and trans uh, proton will take place from them the electron will be picked up here you can see okay they will these are the this is the inner membrane of mitochondria this blue one is the inner membrane of mitochondria so here some carriers are present these are the carriers they are located so electron will be accepted here proton will move to the intermembrane space okay the electron proton released from here a proton will move to the intermembrane space and then accumulate there but the electron they will get transported from one to the second second to the third third to the fourth and fourth to the fifth uh, carriers carrier molecules and again they will be pushed back into the matrix where they will form water that is electron transport chain so let us see what happens so here okay so what are these these carriers okay these carriers i have shown here okay these are the carriers that i've shown these carriers can be named as complex one two three four and five okay this is five this is five so complex one two three four and five what are these complexes these complexes are made up of molecules which are capable of carrying electrons okay carrying electrons so what happens NADH which is present in the matrix this is the matrix this green part okay this NADH which were yielded okay during Krebs cycle or the previous reactions they will this okay it will break down okay it will break down to release proton and electron and it is getting converted to NAD plus okay deficiency in electrons those electrons these blue ones these electrons are accepted by the complex one the protons release into the uh, space intermembrane space so from complex one it will go to complex two then complex three complex four and finally release ATP so here what is complex one okay complex one is mainly made up of NADH dehydrogenase that can break down the electron and proton from NADH then complex two is made up of FADH2 okay it is made up of FADH2 so electron from FADH will be accepted by complex 2 complex 3 is made up of cytochrome BC1 these two 2 and 3 they are again connected by one more which is known as UB quinone okay UB, UB quinone is a mobile carrier so it will carry electron from 2 to 3 then cytochrome C 
okay then it it will be given to cytochrome c which is again a mobile carrier to be finally given to complex 4 complex 4 is again made up of cytochromes a and cytochrome a3 it makes up complex 4 then finally what will happen the electron will be uh, uh, transported out these electrons will now be transported out into the matrix and via this ATP synthase this is the fifth complex that will finally release ATP help in the release of ATP so uh, this way this complexes they are organized one after another say here it's organized again here it's organized somewhere else it will be organized over the in a membrane that will help in release of ATP molecules. We will see further more about it here. This is the intermembrane space, this is the outer membrane, this is the inner membrane, the matrix. Here is the matrix. So citric acid takes place here, citric acid cycle or Krebs cycle takes place, releases NADH, releases FADH2. Okay, so here the complex one, two, three, four. Okay, they will be formed. Then complex five. So what will happen? The electrons will move from one carrier to another. NADH due to NAD, uh, NADH dehydrogenase. What will happen? It will uh, give the electron and the proton will move to the intermembrane space. Then the electron will pass on from one to the other. As I told you, ubiquinone is the carrier here. Okay, as we saw in the previous slide here, you saw in the previous slide here, ubiquinone will carry it to complex 3, okay, from uh, 1 as well as from 2. This is mobile, it can move. These are fixed, okay, the complexes are fixed. And in the meantime, what is happening here, there is accumulation of protons, okay. There is accumulation of protons upon the intermembrane space, as you can see here, protons are accumulating in the intermembrane space. Due to accumulation of protons here, what happens? There is a concentration gradient of proton created. High concentration and in the matrix is low concentration. So as a result, what will happen? There will be a rush of protons from the intermembrane space to the matrix. That rush will release energy. That energy is trapped by ADP inorganic phosphate to form ATP molecule that will form ATP molecule. So this way what happens? There is yield of ATP. In the meantime, there is also release of the electrons. Okay, there is release of the electrons. Uh, protons have reached the matrix. Electrons have reached the matrix. That is accepted by oxygen. That is except protons, electrons forming hydrogen. So oxygen will accept it to form water molecules. So thereby there is release of ATP molecules here further we have here you can see more of it will be more clear here NADH FADH2 this is the matrix okay this is the matrix NADH accepted by the uh, complex one the electron uh, is accepted by the complex one the proton moves to the intermembrane space that electron is carried over by quinone this is the second complex FADH2 gives its electron to it to be accepted by ubiquinone, ubiquinone will give to the third complex, okay, from both 1 and 2, it will give to the third complex and he, even here the protons will move to the intermembrane space, the protons keep on moving to the intermembrane space at ev through every complex, but electrons from one carrier to another because these are electron carriers, they cannot carry proton. So, then cytochrome C, which is mobile, will carry it to the fourth complex. Then from the fourth complex, what will happen? The electrons, which cannot be carried furthermore due to absence of carrier, it will move back into the uh, matrix. In the meantime, there is high accumulation of proton in the intermembrane space. So very high that it, uh, a very, what to say, a gradient is created. Inside the matrix, very low protons, in the intermembrane space very high proton so what will happen the protons all of them will tend to rush through an opening this opening is f0 f1 particle which is always present upon the inner membrane of mitochondria there will be a rush of protons into the matrix due to the rush what happens there is release of energy there is a release of energy and that energy is trapped by adp with the inorganic phosphate okay adp and inorganic phosphate it traps Okay, it forms a third bond to form ATP molecules and these ATP molecules, okay, these are the ATP molecules that will, that 
is desired that is formed within the mitochondria assisted by ATP synthase okay so and the electrons what happens it is accepted by oxygen to form metabolic water okay this is the metabolic water so furthermore citric acid cycle is taking place they will release NADH so this becomes a continuous process with the release of ATP this is electron transport chain now let us see the total yield of energy now now for your information okay that is per okay that is per NADH okay there is yield of there is yield of 3 ATPs per NADH calculations show okay that per NADH there is yield of 3 ATP molecules okay so during glucose we have seen there was yield of 2 NADH so 2 NADH if per NADH it is 3 ATP so it will yield 6 ATP okay it will form 6 ATP from NADH already 2 ATPs were there in glycolysis so total yield of ATP during glycolysis is 8 6 plus 2 okay 6 plus 2 so 2 directly and 6 indirectly from NADH then during the transition step or that link reaction there was yield of 2 NADH so per NADH is 6 ATP so uh, sorry per NADH is 3 ATP so from 2 NADH you will get 6 ATP so in this step you get 6 then during Krebs cycle again okay to uh, there is yield of 4 carbon dioxide okay there was yield of 4 carbon dioxide but 6 NADH 2 FADH2 6 NADH okay 6 NADH will yield 18 ATPs okay 3 per NADH so it will be total 18 and FADH2 okay it shows calculation show that 2 ATP is yielded per FADH2 molecule so we get 4 ATPs from 2 FADH so this way 18 from NADH during Krebs cycle 4 ATP from FADH2 to 2 FADH2 during Krebs cycle so total yield of ATP during Krebs cycle is 24 2 plus 18 plus okay it will give us 24 ATPs during Krebs cycle so during conversion of one glucose to the last step that is carbon dioxide there is yield these are the total yields of all the molecules finally giving us 38 ATPs okay finally giving us 38 ATPs is the total yield so this is how the total yield of ATP we get at the end of respiration. Okay, thank you.